Consider the following situation, I'll call it situation one, where we have a sphere full of charge here, and we'll say it's a charge distribution rho one, and that creates a potential V one. And then suppose we have a completely different situation, situation two, and maybe this is a little uh, square plane of charge, and we'll call that charge distribution rho two, and that creates a potential V two. And these situations are completely separate from each other. They're not near each other at all. They're just completely different situations. And so in this case, we have an unusual relation here. We can say that the integral over all space of rho one V two equals the integral over all space of rho two V one. And this is Green's reciprocity theorem. And I have a couple comments about this. The first thing is that in order to use this theorem, the charge distributions must have a finite extent. In other words, for this plane here, I couldn't have an infinite plane, but having just a small square of charge, that's totally allowed. Also, there are many different kinds of reciprocity theorems, not just in uh, electricity and magnetism, but uh, you see them all over mathematics and physics. So this is just one uh, particular type of reciprocity theorem. Okay, so here's the reciprocity theorem. Now, before we prove it, let's look at some things that you need to know in order to prove the reciprocity theorem. So the first thing that you need to know is that we can write the electric field as the gradient of a potential. This is uh, just a relationship between E and V. The next thing we're gonna use in the proof is this uh, differential form of Gauss's law. And I won't use this in the, in the uh, proof that I'm going to do, but it is possible to do a proof that uses uh, Poisson's equation. And then we have a vector identity. So this is, uh, f is some scalar function and a is some vector function. And this is just a vector identity that uh, we'll end up using in the proof here. And then last, we have the divergence theorem. This is something that relates a volume integral uh, to a surface integral. Okay. Now, one more thing, charge distributions that have finite extent, which is what we are going to have for Green's reciprocity theorem. So if we know that's true, if we have charge distributions that have a finite extent, then that implies that the potential is going to go to zero at infinity. And so that will come up in the proof somewhere. Okay, so now I think we're ready to go ahead and try and prove this. So over on the right here, I have Green's reciprocity theorem, and I have all of the different things that we're going to use in the proof. And to start off, I'm going to look at this integral of E1 dotted with E2. So the first thing that I will use in this proof is I'm going to rewrite E1 using this, uh, this first thing right here. So I'm going to rewrite E right here as the gradient of a potential. So if I do that, and I have something that looks like this. And in my next step here, I am just going to rearrange it a little bit. I'm gonna pull the minus sign outside the integral, and since it is a dot product, scalar product, uh, the order doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna flip it around. And the reason I'm doing that is because I wanna put it in the order that kind of looks like this vector identity right here. So what do I have here? I have a vector dotted with the gradient of a scalar. So that's like this term right here. If I imagine that this A right here, that's really my E2. And then I have this dotted with the gradient of, in this case, my scalar is V1. So F is playing the role of V1. A is playing the role of E2. So if I use this, then I would have this term right here minus this term equal to this term. So let's do that. So I get something that looks like this. So if you can see, this is just that vector identity. This term right here, this del dot E2 V1, that's this right here. And then this second term right here minus the second term, that's this term brought over to the other side. 
Okay, and I have some minus signs going on here. Might as well uh, switch things around, get rid of that minus sign that I have outside. And now I'm going to do two things at once here. First, I'm going to look at this. I have a uh, del dot e. Well, I can rewrite that using this right here. I can rewrite that as a row over epsilon naught. And then this term right here, I have another uh, e. I'm going to use this again. So I'm going to use this one again, and I'm going to rewrite e as the gradient of my scalar potential. So if I do that, this is what it looks like. So this 1 over epsilon naught uh, row 2 is from this right here. And then I just substituted in the uh, gradient of the scalar here for e2. And now this term, this second term right here, I have a minus and a minus. So that can come out and make a plus. And then I have my del operator dotted with this thing in a volume integral. Well, I'm going to rewrite that using this right here. And, um, and one thing I should say, uh, all of these volume integrals that I've been using up until now, these are volume integrals over all space. I just haven't been writing all space each time. Uh, but as you see up here in the reciprocity theorem, the integrals are over all space. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so this term right here looks like this right here. If I imagine that my A here is playing uh, the role of my del v2 v1. Okay, so this is this right here. If I bring this minus out here, make that a plus. So then I have something that looks like this, and then the integral of that d tau. Okay, so that's the left-hand side. I'm going to rewrite that as a surface integral. So let's do that. So that's going to look something like this. So I brought the 1 over epsilon naught outside of this first integral, and this was my volume integral. Plus, and now I have a surface integral, uh, and I just switched the order of these. Um, this is something I'm allowed to do here, and then I have uh, dotted with a dA. Okay, so this is a surface integral. Remember, I'm taking this integral over all space, so I could just let this surface be a really, really, really big sphere, maybe a sphere at infinity. And if I do that, then these potentials will go to zero, because remember, we have a finite charge distribution. And as we go off to infinity, these potentials go to zero. So this whole term right here, it's going to go away. So I'm left with 1 over epsilon naught times the integral of rho 2 v1 d tau. Okay, so to recap, I started with the integral of e1 dotted with e2, and I turned that into 1 over epsilon naught times the integral of rho 2 v1 d tau. But there was nothing special about the order that I did this in. If you remember, I started by rewriting uh, this e1 here using this identity right here, but I could have done it the other way around. I could have started by rewriting e2 in terms of that identity and just going through everything uh, with the 1 and the 2 switched. So what that means is that this also equals 1 over epsilon naught times the integral of rho 1 v2. And now I can just get rid of the 1 over epsilon naughts, and I have the reciprocity theorem. So this is one way to prove it. There are many uh, different ways of proving the reciprocity theorem. What about actually using it? Well, I'm not going to show in this video any examples of how to use it, but just a, a couple quick notes. To use Green's reciprocity theorem, the basic idea is we have a situation that you want to solve, and then you have a second situation where you already know the solution. And you try and connect the two situations in a way that allows you to use Green's reciprocity theorem to simplify the situation.